Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n is equal to 0. Now, in proving this, we are going to use the definition of the limit of a sequence. Now, by definition of the limit of a sequence, this means that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So to prove this, all we want to do is prove that this statement is true. Now, in the proof, we're going to use the following preliminary result. Given any positive real number x, there exists a positive integer m such that 1 over m is less than x. Okay, now before we get into the proof, let's start out with some scratch work. Now in the scratch work, we're trying to outline how we're going to prove this statement. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. And from here, we want to find a positive integer k, which makes this statement turn out true. Now, we don't know what to choose k to be yet, but we're going to figure that out. But let's say we've already figured out what to choose k to be. And from here, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to show that this inequality is true. And I'll start by writing the left-hand side of the inequality. From here, we want to make this less than epsilon. And in the process of making this less than epsilon, we're going to figure out what we should choose k to be. Now, to start, since n plus 1 is greater than n, of course, the square root of n plus 1 is greater than the square root of n. So we must have that the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n is positive. So this entire thing is just equal to square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n. So what should we do? Well, a trick that you can try when dealing with square roots is that you can multiply by the conjugate. That is, we're going to multiply this by square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n over square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. This trick tends to be pretty powerful when dealing with square roots. We see that we're doing this guy times this guy. So really, that's just going to leave us with square root of n plus 1 squared minus square root of n squared. So in the numerator, that leaves us with n plus 1 minus n. And the denominator, we still have square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. But here we see that the n's cancel out, so we're left with 1 over square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. And from here, since square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n is greater than the square root of n, we take the reciprocal of both sides, this gives us that we are less than 1 over the square root of n. So we have reduced this to something that looks pretty simple. And remember, we still want to make this less than epsilon. So maybe it's at this point, we try to figure out what we should choose k to be. Now in doing so, let's first bring k into our work. Since n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that the square root of n must be greater than or equal to the square root of k. And taking the reciprocal of both sides, we have that 1 over the square root of n is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of k. And to figure out what we should choose k to be, all we got to do is apply lemma 1. If we take x to be epsilon, well, we can do that because epsilon is a positive real number. Then there is at least one positive integer which satisfies this inequality for x equals epsilon. Now, let's say that c is a positive integer which satisfies 1 over c is less than epsilon. But since c is positive, we know that c is just equal to the square root of c squared. So really, all we got to do is take k to be the positive integer c squared. 
Well, if we do that, we can replace k with c squared. The square root of c squared is just equal to c, and 1 over c is less than epsilon. So as you can see, we have made this guy less than epsilon, which is what we want. So we have an outline for what our proof is going to look like, so let's start writing up the proof. Okay, now in our proof, all we gotta do is show that this statement is true. Once we do that, we're done. Because we proved this statement, that amounts to saying that this is true. So, since we're trying to prove the statement about every epsilon greater than zero, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a positive integer k, which makes this statement turn out true. Now, in our scratch work, we took k to be c squared. So first, let's introduce c into our proof, right? We obtained c by using lemma 1, right? So applying lemma 1, we'll take x to be epsilon. So we have that there's at least one positive integer, which makes this inequality true, where x is equal to epsilon. And so we'll say that that positive integer is c. And so we're going to take k to be c squared. And so with this choice of k, we're going to proceed to prove that this statement is true. Now, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to show that this inequality is true. So let me start by writing the left-hand side. And we're basically just going to be doing exactly what we did in our scratch work. We know that the absolute value of this guy is just equal to square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n. And then we took this guy and multiplied it by a fraction where both the numerator and denominator contained its conjugate. Right, and from here, we know that we're doing this guy times this guy. And that results in square root of n plus 1 squared minus square root of n squared. So in the numerator, that leaves us with n plus 1 minus n. And in the denominator, we have precisely what we have here. n minus n leaves us with just a 1 in the numerator. But then, as we mentioned in our scratch work, this is just going to be less than 1 over the square root of n. And then it's at this point where we observe that since n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that the square root of n is greater than or equal to the square root of k. Taking the reciprocal of both sides, we have that 1 over the square root of n is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of k. But then, since k is equal to c squared, we'll replace k with c squared. Since c is positive, the square root of c squared is equal to c, and then 1 over c is less than epsilon. So we have shown that this guy is less than epsilon, and that's what we wanted. Now let's put this together. We see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that this guy is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, this guy is less than epsilon. So we have found a positive integer k, which makes this statement turn out true. So this is true. And now putting this all together, we see that under the assumption epsilon is greater than zero, we have that this is true. And since epsilon was arbitrary, this tells us that for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we have proven this entire statement, which means we have shown that this is true. So this completes the proof. And so, yeah, that's... Pretty much it for this video.